All right, so continuing on with section 6.6, .6, we're talking about graphing, and we're, we're talking about the idea of trying to find solutions, um, x, y solutions that solve this equation. So um, the next example, we're on page three, if you're printing off your note packet and following along, we see that um, we have an activity, so you can pause and practice this before you come back in if you like. But we're looking for numbers that you put in for x, times it by three, Subtract a y value and it equals two. Now some of y'all are better at doing this math in your head and you might just think about that and come up with, you just need to come up with two really. I recommend three um, to just check yourself, but really it only takes two good points to connect to make a line. So you might think about this. For me, it's easier just to do the math, to do the um, my algebra trick of solving equations. So I would recommend this. And now um, I'm emphasizing how there's no magic to what numbers you pick for X or you pick for Y. But just so we'll have some uh, uniformity here, I did some sample points for you. We're going to plug in negative 2, negative 1 for X, see what you get for Y. Then we'll plug in 0 and 1 for Y and see what you get for X. And then lastly, uh, not yet, so 0 and 1. And again, these were random. There's no special anything about these points. You pick whatever you like. Uh, so we're going to have plenty of points. So just to show you the technique, you plug this in for x, 3 times negative 2 minus y equals 2, and then you equation solve, what we learned on the last um, sections that we did, equation solving. So negative 6 minus y. So I throw the negative 6 across the line, making that plus 6, bring down the minus y equals 8, you have to divide by the negative sign if you have one to finish. So y equals 8 divided by negative 1, oh, negative 8. So there's a y value. Would you have guessed it, right? For you that work things in your head, could, did you guess that? 3 times negative 2 minus negative 8, it equals 2. Check it out. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Minus negative makes that plus 8. That works. That's 2. So that's a combo that works. Uh, and then just do it again. Negative 1. So we start over. 3 times x is negative 1 minus y equals 2. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Then we throw the negative 3 to the other side, making it plus 3. So we have negative y equals 2 and 3 is 5. Divide by negative 1. And there's another solution. Negative 5. All right. Again, would you have thought of that one? 3 times negative 1, let's see, that's negative 3, minus negative 5, so 3, I see, negative 3 plus 5, oh, that works too, 2. All right, now we can keep on that route, but you could also, I want you to know, you can plug in for the y side. You can plug in a y value, value and solve for x. You can do it that way from that perspective as well. So to practice that, 0 for y this time, and then we're going to discover x. So 3 times x minus, plugging in y is 0, equals 2. 3x minus 0, we can kind of just drop out the 0 and say that's 3x equals 2. Divide by 3, and it's 2 thirds. Again, we prefer not to have fractions to graph it or harder to graph, but it is what it is. That is the solution. Uh, the next one, I'm going to plug in 1 for y. So looking for x, so leave 3x. Subtract, plugging in 1 for y equals 2. Equation solve that by throwing the 1 across the line. 3x is 3. And that gives us x is 1. All right? Hey, did y'all think of that one? Maybe that one's a little easier to do in your head. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 1. That equals 2. So 1 and 1 actually was the solution. Now I shift back to doing uh, x value. So again, you can do either side, either perspective. You're just looking for combinations that solves this original equation. So I'm plugging x is 0. 3 times 0 minus y equals 2. 3 times 0 is 0. So we just have the minus y equals 2. Divide out the negative 1. Negative 2. So there's another combo. 3 times 0, subtract negative 2. That works as well. Now I'm plugging in 1 for x. 3 times 1 is 3. Throw the 3 across the line, makes it minus 3. So I have a negative y on the left side and a negative 1 on the right side. I have to divide out the negative signs. y is 1. Oh, we already did that. 
that, didn't we? But we did it from the other perspective. But we kind of knew that solution, maybe it, it shows up again. Same solution, though, one and one. All right, one more example. We are going to plug in on the Y side. Again, no magic to that. You plug on either side you want for X or for the Y. I'm going to plug in negative 4 for Y. So it's 3X. I'm trying to figure out X. Subtract Y is negative 4 equals 2. So this subtract the negative changes to plus. So I've got a positive 4 to throw across the line, making it minus 4. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Divide by the 3, negative 2 thirds, a fraction. But those happen these days. <laughs> now, we plot those points, and I'd ask you to do that if you haven't already, and see that they line up. We've got overkill here. You don't need all of these points. What I've got seven points, like I said, only two good points is necessary to graph your line. But um, this is good practice for us just to see the variety of things that can um, happen. Um, plugging in and on the different sides and so on. All right, so let me graph a few of these. Negative two, negative eight would be back two and then down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So back two, down eight, about there. Negative one, negative five, that would be back one and down five. This two thirds and zero is kind of hard to plot, like I said, but two thirds of the way between zero and one would be about right there and then zero. One, one, over one, up one. Zero, negative two would be zero and then down two. Notice how those look to be lining up nicely. And then negative two thirds and negative four. You see that looks like it falls on that line too. So anything that solves this equation should be connectable. Now I've just thrown this on the board without you know, being meticulous. So not a perfectly straight line, but you can kind of tell that works, right? The solutions line up. Um, some notes to make about this is where the line crosses the x-axis, we call that the x-intercept, where it intercepts or crosses the x-axis, and then we have a y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Those are found actually uh, with the zeros. So sometimes they'll specify when we're graphing, we're going to see that a little bit, they'll specify, tell me where those intercepts are specifically. So the x-intercept is found when y equals zero, and the y-intercept is found when x equals zero. So the zeros for the x and the y, that's where the intercepts fall, as it's sometimes requested. Okay, we're going to do that again. Again, I ask you to always pause the video, the practice is good, then come back in and see if you're right. All right, so the second one, 2x minus 5y equals 10. We're looking for combos that solve this, and um, I've thrown in some particular numbers to practice with, and I will uh, buzz through those and give you the answer for each of those. So we're, first of all, we're plugging in negative 2 for the x. First answer, you should have got negative 16 fifths. And then for the next one, we're going to plug in negative 1 for x. So 2 times negative 1 minus 5y equals 10. I throw the negative 2 over, making plus 2. Oh, these all come out to be fractions so far. You should get um, negative 12 fifths for that one. Then I switch to plugging in for the y side. So I'm going to plug in values for y, 0 to start. So 2x minus 5 times 0 equals 10. Oh, that one comes out nicer. We get x equals 5. So 5, 0. And that's actually the x-intercept whenever you let y equal 0. Uh, next one, I'm plugging in 1 for y. Uh, so plus 5, 2x equals 15, dividing by 2, x is 15 over 2, back to fractions, aren't we? All right, then the next one I'm plugging in 0 for the x side, so that'll give me the y-intercept, so 2 times 0 for x is just zeros that, 
Then we divide by the negative 5 on each side, and y equals negative 2. So 0, negative 2, that's your y-intercept. Okay, next I'm plugging in 1 for x, 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Positive 2 thrown across the line is minus 2. So negative 5y equals 8. Divide both sides by negative 5. y is negative 8 fifths fraction again. And then lastly, I ask you to plug in negative 4 for the y variable. So one more time with this. And again, we have way too many points. We only need two good points to graph a line, but this is just a little extra right now to make sure we got the idea of plugging in values, solving this equation to get a t-table. Uh, so 2x, that's plus 20, negative 5 times negative 4. To solve that, then we show the, throw the 20, the positive 20 over, makes it minus 20. 10 minus 20 is negative 10. Divide both sides by 2 and negative 5. All right, so again, we could do this all day long. You might feel like I already have been, right? Like it already feels it. But you can keep doing this. You plug in any number that you want. Um, these were just some practice problems, so we all have the same thing to practice. But um, there's no right or wrong answer there. You're just looking for two or three good points to plot onto your graph to draw your line. Now, all of these are solutions. These are sample solutions. Because, like I said, there's many more to go. We could keep on going with that. But uh, let's just pick two or three of these. I'll, I'll probably avoid the fraction. Let's plot 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. Let's plot 0, negative 2. 0 for x, then negative 2 for y is here. And then let's plot that third one. 1, 2, 3, 4, back 5, and then down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, where those meet. And you see those look like they line up. Connect your dots. Every solution that solves that equation should fall on that line somewhere. All right, so that's the idea of point plots. So one more example for you, but I feel like we should go ahead and, uh, well, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So you, if you feel like you've had it with it, you just go ahead and know I'm going to do one more example here in this video, and then I'll move to the next point in the next video. All right, so another uh, example of a linear equation. It's not arranged the same way the other two that we just saw were. Notice the, the y is on this side and the x on this side. That's okay. Sometimes they rearrange it, but know that it is still a legit linear equation, and we can plug values in for the x or the y. I don't know why I picked these particular numbers, but, you know, they work. You, but there's anything you want here. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x, so y equals 3 times negative 2 minus 2 would be y equals that would be negative 8. Then I'm going to plug in um, negative 1. I think I'll just use this to save time. I'm going to plug in x is negative 1, so that's negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5. Okay, then I switch gears. I plug in on the y side, which is going to be a little more work. y is 0. And then to solve that, I would throw the 2 across the line and divide by the 3. So x is 2 thirds. Okay, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to plug in 1 for y. Notice the y is right here on the left side now. So throw the 2 across makes plus 2, which is 3, equals that 3x. Divide by 3. x is 1. That's nice. Comes out even. And then we switch back to plugging in on the x side. So I'm going to plug in for x, which is on the right side of this equation, I'm going to plug in 0. So 3 times 0 minus 2, that's negative 2. I don't have to do equation solving, right? It's all arithmetic when no variables left um, in your work. So now I'm going to plug in 1. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 would be 1. Oh, we had that one already, didn't we? And then uh, negative 4 on the y side, plugging in for y. So back over here, negative 4 for y equals 3x minus 2. I have to equation solve on this one. Sometimes you do, depending on the, what variable you plugged in for and how the equation lays. Uh, that gives you negative 2 thirds. So there are seven sample points to choose from. Plot those, draw your line.